All right, let's get things underway. Welcome one and all to a special session to anticipate and address the most pressing cybersecurity trends for leaders across the spectrum of small to medium businesses. Each trend that we discuss will be based on research in addition to insights from Synet's Threat Intel and our work with SME risk management executives around the world. I'll just be asking the questions. The answers will come from two esteemed experts with decades of experience. Netan Yelamar is Synet's co-founder and COO. George Tubin is our director of product strategy. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your perspectives to clarify key questions for our audiences today. Thank you, Michael. Glad to be here. Great. And speaking of questions, we'll also save some time for Q&A at the end. So if anything leaps to mind over the course of our discussion, don't hesitate to share that in the Zoom chat. We'll cover what we can, then close the rest out over email. George, Netanyel, are we ready to dive in? We're good to go. Then let's tee off our whistle-stop trend tour with some stats. The Gen AI proof point that's on the screen here might raise fears of another, quote, AI will change everything TED talk, but I suspect there's a more subtle dynamic driving a 2024 undercurrent. Netanyahu, help us understand how these proof points are connected. Okay, so what uh, these stats uh, signal is a stable security paradox that will solidify in 2024. In annual surveys, C-suite leaders consistently rank cybersecurity among the top risks of their organization. What changes from year to year is the reason of the worry. In 2024, generative AI will keep them up at night. And this is the reason. 52% of CISOs and, C, uh, and CIOs expect generative AI to lead to a catastrophic cyber attack next year. I want to be very honest in here. When generative AI first hit the scene, Many security leaders feared it will invent a never-before-seen malware, the mother of all exploits and stuff like that. We, that didn't happen. We are hoping it will never happen uh, as well. But what really happened is generative AI amplified the volume of existing, uh, existing threat. We are seeing more and more of those into unbelievable scale and amount of, uh, uh, of uh, different type of uh, threat, including malware, social uh, engineering type of uh, threat, phishing attacks, et cetera, et cetera. So inbound threats are increasing exponentially. And the paradox is that security resources are actually trending the opposite direction. So oh. 20%, one in five security budget will shrink or freeze in 2024. This is something that changed completely opposite from the last 20 years when we grow the budget, we grow the amount of people, the amount of technologies that we are purchasing in order to protect ourselves. And we are also seeing that 47% of organizations actually plan to reduce their security team personnel. And this is in a world of 3.5 million cybersecurity open position currently needed worldwide. Climate change, economic changes, a lot of different challenges are over there to support that but this is what we are seeing. So it will place uh, immense pressure on small cybersecurity team and to maximize efficiency. That is a fascinating point of departure and perhaps a little bit counterintuitive because the stats seem to signal a cybersecurity paradox that might solidify in 2024, where on the one hand, threats are increasing exponentially. On the other hand, security budgets and staffing are taking a hit. They're trending in the opposite direction. Is there anything that corporate culture can do to close that gap, Netanyahu? I think, yes. What, what we are seeing is that uh, more and more CISOs are going to get compensated, uh, um, you know, in a way that I don't want to see my business get exposure. I don't want to see any cyber attack. I don't want to see my name on the news. And your, let's say, one component of your salary will be based on that. This is very hard when you're tied, your hands are tied and you are getting reduced uh, budget and the amount of security personnel. But we have a lot of things uh, to do uh, in this area. We will talk about it later, about consolidation, automation, and other things that we can do. But yep. definitely, definitely, we need to change the way that we are currently facing uh, the problem. So the big difference, by the way, between um, SMEs and big organization, corporate organization, is their ability to fight those threats uh, in a different position. Big enterprises have the budget, big enterprises have the manpower, big enterprises have the knowledge, the ability to have uh, um, uh, the right defense mechanism in their hands. SMEs find it much more challenging today. 
You know, that was actually going to be my next question of you, SMEs are going to be the hardest hit. And why is that? What makes the problem so particularly tricky for them? And it sounds like it really boils down to the availability of resources and expertise. The multinationals, they're going to throw money at this problem. The smaller companies, yep. they need to be a little bit more cost effective in terms of how they adapt. And it sounds like part of that equation is organizational adaptation, making sure that liability is recognized and shared across the enterprise. But I'm sure technology is also an essential part of the answer too. George, can you help us understand what leaders with small teams should look for in a security solution as their small teams fight this rising tide of budget cuts and staffing squeezes? No, oh, George, you're on mute. Yeah, yeah here, let, let me just focus on one key technology for this. Um, you know, given the fact that we're going to see an extraordinary rise in attacks and threats coming at the organization, you know, and given the fact that remarkably, we'll see a lot of organizations actually shrink staff okay. um, and not put as much money into the problem, I, I think the only real way to to address this is really to fight fire with fire. And uh, I think SMEs especially really need to start looking at automation. Uh, security automation has been around for quite a while. Um, we see a lot of advances in it. It's become very capable, especially when it comes to um, you know re response automation. Yeah. Um, it's going to be particularly helpful for SMEs that have limited staff, um, limited protective technologies, and limited expertise. Um, they can rely on automation to handle the the incredible volumes of attacks they're going to see. Um, as well as look to automation to make sure that every threat that comes in is competently and thoroughly addressed. Um, you know, if, if you only have a couple of people on the team and you have thousands of alerts to look at, you can't get to every single one. So instead, you're going to only look at high risk alerts. But doing that puts your company at risk because a lot of low risk alerts are indicative of an attack hiding around in the environment. Yep. So realistically, every alert really should be looked at. I mean, certainly you prioritize how you look at it based on risk, sure. but you need to address them all. And we find that uh, response automation is really helping to pick up that slack. Um, so I, I think it's definitely a technology that SME should be looking into um, in the coming year. You know, those core criteria make a lot of sense. And as we move on to our next trend, we know that SMEs will face threats at unprecedented scale, but what about the effects of each threat? Netanyahu, can you help us understand the financial stakes of cybersecurity in 2024? Definitely. Look at the stats. Security risks are not only uh, increasingly common, but increasingly costly too. The cost of security incident is climbing far faster for SMEs compared to larger enterprise. So we are talking about 20% year over year increase in average. Um, the cost of data breach for organization within, let's say, one to 5,000 employees reached almost $5 million in 2023. Collectively, the cost of cybercrime, listen carefully to this number, the cost of cybercrime in 2024 will reach $9.2 trillion. This is double the amount of climate damages during this year. This is crazy number. Cryptocurrency helped uh, cyber criminals with ransomers, right? Before that, it was very hard to get the money uh, without uh, uh, being traced. Same thing is going uh, in here. In the same time, we are seeing the reason of cyber insurance growing into 20 billion. It started with $7 billion in 2020, and it grew to $20 billion in 2024. This is triple the amount we started with. Add to that, that the let's say if cybercrime were a country with a GDP of 9.2 trillion, it would be the world's third largest national economy. You know, just after that, the United States and, and China. So 9.2 trillion dollar in losses. Mm -hmm. It's something that makes the attacker um let's say very happy because they have minimal effort in order to gain this amount. And for us, it's a nightmare. Now, we talked about the volume before. Let me give you some stats from the Bank of America uh, Global uh, Research uh, Center. This is a fascinating uh, 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 stats you can see over there. In the beginning of 2020, 
we faced 122,000 cyber attack per week. This is crazy number. Two years later, during 2022, we are talking about 300 million cyber attack per week. This is what organization need to face it. The same analysts are actually believe that by the end of this decade, in 2029, it's going to be 50 billion. So when George talk about automation, we have no other way. When we are talking about the ability to really understand what we can do in order to keep this number away from our business, mm -hmm. is something that we need to prioritize and we need to do it very, very fast. Well, let's actually talk about that a little bit because you just shared a lot of numbers with a lot of zeros and anything that is twice as costly as an extinction level ecosystem collapse is scary to contemplate to say the, the absolute least. So where do SMEs go from here? I'll put that to you first, Netanyahu, and then um, I've got a question for you too, George. So I would say that for SME leaders, uh, it will be critical to maximize protection while minimizing the impact to operate in their business. Because SMEs, you know, not, not as big enterprise, need to have a very smart way mm -hmm. to protect their business. And actually to detect stuff is not going to work uh, uh, in this era. We need yeah. to go prevention first. No one wants to detect a ransomware 10 minutes the inter after the entire organization was encrypted. It right. needs to be blocked. We need to see zero business impact. So we need to prioritize uh, prevention capabilities across the entire organization and specifically where we have sensitive information. So this not only reduces the risk of breach in the first place, it's also position you in a financial protection such as cybersecurity insurance because they will have also some demands in order for you to be uh, uh, to get your uh, uh, cyber insurance policy, even when you will need it, really need it. And, you know, we see that cyber insurance becoming increasingly popular. The market, it, it appears, is set to expand from $7 billion in 2020 all the way up to $20 billion next year. So, and, and you know, perhaps that's because it almost sounds like uh, cyber insurance is the elusive middle of a Venn diagram in that it appeals to both CISOs but also CFOs. So keep me honest here, George, with a win-win situation like that, I assume every SME is already covered by an ironclad cyber insurance policy. Is that the case? You would assume that, right? <laughs> but you know what they say about assumptions. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the unfortunate truth is that uh, no, um, we, we do see a lot of SMEs taking on cyber insurance, but a lot of them just can't. Uh, mm -hmm. And the reasons they can't are twofold. One is that uh, some of them don't have enough coverage in place that a, a cyber insurance company won't even offer them cyber insurance because it's just far too risky, uh, you know, to take them on as a client. And then the second problem is, is that the cost of the cyber insurance for some SMEs is just prohibitive um, for the same reason. You know, they don't have uh, enough protections in place to minimize the risk. Um so the cyber insurance companies you know, charge them a ridiculous amount of money, and then the SMEs decide not to take on the cyber insurance. So yep. while it's there and it's great, and you said, you know, helps the, you know, uh, the chief risk officer, helps the CFO, helps the company, mm -hmm. uh, we just don't see it as prevalent as it should be yet. You know, I probably should have guessed that there would be boxes to check. I'm over here just kind of parading my naivete. But in that case, what should an SME leader look for in a security solution to qualify for favorable coverage? Yeah, I mean, there are some basics that are looked for. Um, I, you know, Netanel brought up, you know, really the main thing is one, prevention. You know, having very good preventative technologies in place and making sure these technologies are effective. Insurance companies do look at the technologies being used. It's not just, is the technology in place and checkbox the technology? But it's, you know, which company are you using? Because they've done deep evaluations. So, you know, they know what's effective and what's not. Now, for an SME to figure out what the most effective solution is, believe me, I know it's not easy. You know, you've got thousands of vendors, every vendor screaming that they're the best solution under the sun. And it's hard to cut through that noise. Uh, fortunately, there are independent third-party tests Yep. that folks could look at, like there was a recent MITRE ATT&CK test, and MITRE ATT&CK is really the, you know, the the, the cream of the crop when it comes to uh, eva third-party evaluations that are done. 
So, you know, I'd recommend looking at MITRE. I'd recommend looking at, you know, peer reviews, uh, looking at discussions on some of the social networks out there to have it, you know, to understand um, where they're going to get the most bang for the buck. But, um, you, know, you know, really trying to get the, the most effective solution possible, I think is number one. Number two, it's realizing that it's not just about a silver bullet. And, you know, this is, you know, Cybersecurity 101, um, but it's very difficult for SMEs that don't have the budget and staff is putting in a layered security approach. Um, you know, nothing's going to catch 100% of threats. So we need to have layers in there, um, you, know, to, you know, to make sure you're getting as much coverage across your environment as you can. And then the third thing that we talked about before is, is automation. Um, yeah ensuring that you can get to all the threats and handle them appropriately. And then when you do handle the threats, making sure you're handling them in a consistent and thorough manner. Um, so I think those are the three things that I think SME should be looking at. I, I would say, uh, George, one second, Michael, I, I want to add something to that. We are also seeing lately more and more CISOs getting technologies that are right for them. We saw in the previous year more and more SMEs are buying top-notch security controls, but then they find out that they need to put 20 analysts in front of the screens right. in order to get 10 or 15% of, of those uh, security controls capabilities. We are seeing more and more a smart and creative approach for, for such uh, uh, CISOs, looking for the best technologies for them, not necessarily the best brand or, uh, uh, the, let's say, the the best security control for um, global 2000 type of uh, uh, of company with huge amount of security expert uh, uh, methodologies and capabilities. Yep. You know, I can totally yep. see how that I would add complexity and end up as a double edged sword where you're basically introducing exactly. as you try to solve the last one. Uh, George, did you have something else to add? No, no, no. I, I was agree once again agreeing with that now. <laughs> 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 well, that's good. But in that case, we can move on to our third trend. So we now know that threat volume is rising. The cost is rising. But so are geopolitical tensions around the world. Netanyahu, how does that impact the risk management equation? Mm. So previously, the vast majority of cyber attacks could be attributed in two threat actors type. One is the financially motivated. They want money. Yeah, we see with ransomer groups, uh, you know, uh, pressure victims for payment uh, as soon as possible and stuff like that. We also see state sponsored, so pursuing national defense interests such as the the, the Boeing uh, bridge and stuff like that. What we are seeing now and expect to continue in twenty four is the rapid growth of ideologically motivated threat actors. For these activists, chaos is the goal in and of itself. Okay, well. In that case, it sounds like war. And, you know, for, for some of these conflicts, I believe that that is actually the technical term a political scientist would use, war. Uh, but the threat actor incentives are diversifying. Why does motive matter? And how should an S how should SME risk management calculus account for an objective as abstract as chaos? So I believe SMEs in sectors once thought as, as a safe must increase their cyber uh, awareness. So multinational of all tribes have long been targeted because they have, you know, the cash in hand to steal. But at the same, even true for SMEs, where cyber capabilities are more often correspond to sector. Ideologically motivated threat actors care less about the sector and they are actually having every organization is on the menu. So fortunately, there are signs that will shift uh, is recognized and we are seeing that investors rank geopolitical as the number one risk in market for 2024. This is a very good sign. And also, 40, as you can see here, 48% of CEOs are increasing cyber investment in response to geopolitical conflicts. Well, that's, that's actually refreshing to hear because so often the narrative centers on stubborn barriers to communication or collaboration between security leaders and the rest of the C-suite or boards kind of just generally being clueless about the risks facing their organization. So SMEs executives across industries must recognize security as an organizational enabler, not as a narrow niche of, uh, you know, uh, for technical specialists and to build it into a fabric of their operations. This is the only way to do it. Right. Well, you know, we've also, we've already discussed how security budgets are flattening as inbound attacks skyrocket. George, now we add to that 
this understanding that geopolitics are expanding target sets for threat actors, how would you advise a small security team or which capabilities, I should say, would you advise a small security team to make sure that they have while at the same time protecting TCO or protecting the bottom line by optimizing for TCO? Yeah, it's funny. You know, like, I'm over here throwing around acronyms. <laughs> like, like, like there's not enough for small or medium sized enterprises to worry about. Now they have to, you know, worry about, uh, you know, geopolitical threats and, right. and it, 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 ideologically motivated uh, attacks. Um, so I think if you if you you know look at think about the technologies that we talked about, um, but I really want to lean into something that Nell said earlier, and that's you know when an SME goes out to look for a technology, oftentimes they make the mistake of buying a technology that was built for a very large enterprise. So it tends to be a very complex technology. It has you know a ridiculous amount of configurability. Um, a lot of settings that have to be managed, um, a lot of different, you know, screens and dashboards, and it becomes overly complex for a small, medium-sized organization that may only have a few people on their team and just, they don't have like dedicated FTEs that these technologies were built for just to manage, you know, the, this one, um, you know, technology. Um, so, you know, you really need to find technologies that were built for SMEs, something that's a little bit more intuitive and, and simple, not simplistic, but simple, where, you know, everything is prevented, presented much more simply. So something that's very easy to deploy, and then something's very easy to manage um, on an ongoing, to operate um, and manage on an ongoing basis. Um, the second thing I think that's very important for SMEs in you know, most of the analyst firms talk about this as well, is making sure that you have some type of security expert, uh, you know, a third party organization providing expertise to you, human expertise, whether it's a MSSP, whether it's an MDR, whether it's one of your technology providers. Um, the unfortunate truth is that an SME is just not going to have the depth and breadth of knowledge that a large enterprise will have, you know, a lot of large enterprise, you know, I, I could, you know, reach out to an expert like that now um, mm -hmm. to, to answer difficult questions that I don't know the answer to. But if I'm in an SME, I, I don't necessarily have that available to me. So I, I need somebody to go to where I can get an answer in a moment to make sure that, um, you know, my answers, my questions are answered. I'm not letting dangerous things slip by. But I'm getting very, um, you know, good advice from these third parties. So I, I think that's something else I'd look for as well. I can totally see how there'd be a lot of value in the ability to scale your access to expertise without adding costly headcount, especially amid a cybersecurity skills shortage where expertise co comes at a premium. Um, but gentlemen, that was a tour de force. Netanyahu, thank you for helping us understand which trends will shape risk management decision making in 2024. George, thank you for connecting those trends to the technology capabilities that teams can leverage to reduce their risk. We've still got a couple minutes for Q&A, so let's see what we are working with here. Here's a question. How will the cyber vendor landscape evolve in 2024? So I think we talked a lot about mm. what threat actors are up to and how organizations are responding, but what about the vendors that are providing solutions to those organizations? So I think additional capabilities are needed to improve the posture, but that compounds complexity. At the same time, security budget are staying the same or even getting reduced. So I believe the first answer is consolidation. What we need to have is the ability to have a wall-to-wall -wall visibility across the organization, the ability to build the context in a way that will reduce the noise. There's a huge amount of noise, false positive, uh, uh, alert, uh, fatigue, etc. Reduce the time it takes us to triage and to handle different alerts uh, uh, in our environment and to do it in a very fast way and prevention, prevention, prevention. All those different capabilities need to be consolidated and wrapped with a 24 by uh, uh, seven um, uh, monitoring and incident response capabilities to assist SMEs um, with, let's say, in the hardest time when you are facing an incident, you must take care of. Sound advice, George, anything you'd like to add there? 
Yeah, no, I, f I fully agree. I, I think, you know, the two types of consolidation. One is just the number of vendors out there is overwhelming and is unsustainable. Um, so, that, you know, there should be, we will see a consolidation of that acquisitions and um, and so forth. But as, as Netnell said, I think we need to see a very strong technology consolidation rather than a number of different tools out there that operate separately or, or are loosely integrated. Um, just, you know, more different technologies um, brought together on a single suite. And, you know, and we've seen some of this, you know, we see XDR, um, which is a step in that direction. It's a, it's a strong, it's a great step. But I think yep. for an SME, you need, even need to go beyond that and not just look at consolidating, you know, telemetry mm -hmm. and, um, you know, alerts, but also looking at consolidating other components, other cybersecurity technologies onto a, a single cohesive platform. And, 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 I, and, I, and I agree, I, I think we'll definitely see more of that going forward. It seems like, you know, simplicity is not just for the convenience of user experience, but it's truly an enabler of performance and can maximize protection for the entire organization. So I appreciate that perspective. Looks like we we actually got a smart question here in the uh, Q&A chat. Zhao asks, what role could a Signet channel partner have in this SME challenge? Mm, that's a very good question. So I will I will split my answer into two. First help the customer understand what they need, not necessarily what they want. This is very tricky because as a channel partner, you will probably know the organization challenges, the sector challenges, the amount of manpower they have, the level of vendors that they have outside, and you can actually help them with meeting their needs and their pain points with the right technology and service, both. Second, I would say one of the biggest challenge today for vendors, for service providers, for channel partners, and for the customers themselves is time. We don't have enough time. We need to reduce time for detection, time for response, and time for resolution. And I believe that when you have a channel partner close to the customer, having the ability to know the people, to reach out, to be on site in some uh, in some cases, and to, be com to provide the complementary service into the Signet offering, I think it will be the best for each and every customers in the uh, um, in the market today. Yeah, I, I I completely agree with that, and I think you know if you're a channel partner and you're really trying to serve your market, you're going to have to pull together multiple technologies, multiple capabilities, and offer that all to your client. Um, and maybe you'll help them integrate. Maybe you'll help them deploy. Um, but if you can go get a solution that already has multiple technologies integrated into a single interface and single platform, you're you're saving your clients a lot of time and energy and a tremendous amount of costs uh, by doing that. So, you know, I, I, I think that's something also to consider. I'm really glad that Zhao asked that question because partners will be so pivotal to helping organizations address some of these Correct. challenges. So. Thank you for asking that, Zhao. I see that we're just about at time. So with all, with that said, thank you everybody for watching. At Signet, we're looking forward to helping more SMEs secure success in 2024. Until then, may you and your teams have a safe and happy holiday season. Stay secure.